Hi, and welcome to this edition of Belmont Journal. Chat with the chair, Mark Polillo. Nice to see you. It's August 29th, the end of a long summer. Long summer. But Belmont government still is ticking. We've been busy all summer. Well, good to see you again, Steve. Thanks for coming back. You Absolutely know, I, I welcome. I put this suit on after a week on the Cape. <laughs> I'm glad it fit. I was able to button it at least, so snug. that's good. A week of vacation. Too. I was there you go. Last week as well. Well, you know, fluid retention. That's what happens. Well, probably. You get a little old. Yeah. So let's hope. Let's hope that you that's look. What it you is. look marvelous. Well, thank as you. They say. You look better than I do today with that nice tie on. But that's so, fine. Uh, it's friend. not even a clip on. There you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's jump right into it here. Uh, all right. Agenda tonight. Uh, you deal with the Collins report. This Collins sent the report. I don't know, it's 42, 45 pages. Yeah, it has all kinds of stuff in it, long. all kinds of restructuring, all kinds of suggestions, all kinds of stuff. Mm. Um, so, okay. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, first and foremost, thank you for you know, starting off with that. Um, it's a very important report, and you know, I'm committed to really looking at all of the recommendations. There are 19 recommendations within it. If you read the cover letter and you read through the report, it's pretty stark. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a blistering report, but it's, it's strong language and pointed recommendations around some of the things that you know, Steve Cirillo and members of the Collins Center believe we should implement from a town perspective to do a better job around our financial you know, operations, our financial organization. And there's some controversial issues in there, clearly, on how we reorganize. Um, we're going to go at it tonight. I mean, my, my colleagues and I are going to spend a fair amount of time tonight, <laughs> probably starting with the budget process and going through those recommendations. Look, it's a report. There's 19 recommendations. We don't need to implement all of them. I don't, there are some there that I, I clearly think that we won't recommend, you know, won't, won't implement. But we need to discuss it as, as a team, uh, starting with the budget process. I think the budget process has worked in the past, clearly, but it's always been a grind. It's somewhat disjointed. There's some disorganization around it, and I think we need to do a better job of that. We're fortunate to have hired a new finance director, Jennifer Hewitt, who's now our assistant town administrator. Yes. I don't know if you've met her, Steve. Very I talented. Have. I uh, have. Great experience, and uh, she's going to lead that effort. Um, and we're really going to look at um, those recommendations and go through them one by one. Um, we were fortunate enough to get a grant um, to um, use the Collins Center uh, to do this report. And if you watch the meeting, and those are the folks that are out there that watched the meeting, he was pretty pointed in terms of what we need to do to address our ongoing fiscal challenges. And they're real. I um, mean, you know, clearly, in the past, we've been able to balance our budget by the use of one-time funds. Um, if you read anything about the use of one-time funds, they always say, you've told me this as well, Steve, you can't use one-time funds to balance operating budgets. We need to wean ourselves off of that. One-time funds are great to use for capital projects, and I think we're really going to look at that. I'm committed to it. We can't just all, all, all of a sudden just do that because we won't be able to balance our 24 budget and perhaps our 25 budget if we do, in fact, decide not to use one-time funds. We have to do that. But we, over time, we need to wean ourselves off of the use of one-time funds. We use that to, to sort of plug a gap that we have every year. And they, the Collins Center was pretty strong about that. It was in the DLS report, Division of Local Services report in 2011. Talked about the use of one-time funds. You and I have talked about this a number of times. Um, I know that you know um, the Department of Revenue, Division of Local Services, MMA, whatever organization you want to talk about, has always said you cannot use one-time funds to balance your budget. So we really need to do a better job of that. So we're going to really dive in starting September 15th with um, having a, a more organized budget process, budget summits, if you will, somewhat fashioned after the way Lexington did it, some, to some extent taking into consideration the Collins Center. And the way we're going to do it this year is we're going to start with revenue projections first. We always start with expenditures, and we say, hey, do we have enough money to pay for that? I think the approach that makes sense to me and hopefully my colleagues is let's start with revenue, see what we can afford, and then we build our expenditure budget. Well, I, I think that's that's probably wise. I mean, it's 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 how I do. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but I would think a lot of people do their own, even their own home budget. The town budget's a big budget. I get it. it's a big number, but it's it's just a glorified household budget. You have utilities, you have costs, you got you know. Um, um, Fixed costs, you got taxes, you got, yeah, it's, it's, it's. That's right. So when you do your That's home right. budget, or when I do my home budget, and perhaps when you do yours, it's okay. How much money we got in the pot? Belmont has so much money in the pot. 
That's right. Get them from various sources. I mean, there's tax revenue, some stuff from the state, there's some free cash, there's some grants. Yeah, a lot of money from the state. There's some stuff there, there, but yeah. it's a set number. Right. And if you're like me, you don't try not, you can't spend more than what you got. Unless yeah. you want to go in debt. Well, but, and, and, and I think you're right. It's sort of a glorified thing. And then, uh, you know, I'll use my daughters. You know, you learn a lot from your kids. So my daughters go in, they have somebody they go shopping. They pull out a pair of jeans and a sweater. Oh, that's one. Oh, that's really nice. I really like that. And they look at the price tag and then they do an analysis. Well, is this something I want or something that I need? If it's something that she needs because you have no jeans, okay, you buy the jeans. If it's something just that you want, you don't get the money, well, back on the shelf. It's yeah, very uh, simplistic, but... Look, I, I mean, I, I understand that point of view. Um, I mean, the residents of our community have a certain level of expectation around services that we deliver, level services, if you will. I mean... There's strong commitment to our schools. I'm committed to our schools as well. And, you know, clearly we have to continue to deliver services at a certain level. But it's tough. And it's difficult to decide. You know, there's a lot of sort of articles out there. Some communities have been successful in doing this. It's really challenging to decide what are our priorities. Because you and I would, you and I could talk about what the priorities are. We would differ. Get five people in the room, they would all have a different point of view. So, so priority-based budgeting yes. is really challenging to do. I've talked to a number of other town administrators and managers in other communities and members of select boards. They really don't do it. But I think we need to start with what are our revenues, and we're going to use free cash, clearly. And as you say, we need to eventually, in time, perhaps we have a certain amount of free cash we use every year. But when we're using five, six, seven million dollars to balance the budget, that is just not sustainable, Steve. It's not. And I think my colleagues understand that. Certainly the town administrator understands that, and hopefully the residents understand that as well. So we need to scaffold, if you will, that was a term that was used in a meeting I was at recently. Over time, the reduction of use of one-time funds, free cash, direct those funds perhaps to more of our capital needs in town, which are significant. You know that as well use a certain amount for our operating budget, and have a process that works and it's more streamlined and organized. And to, to some extent, if we have to make decisions around priorities, we're going to have to make decisions around priorities. I mean, we had a failed override. The residents, loud and clear, last year told us no, right? And, um, no doubt about it. We've talked about the possibility of an override uh, for the 25 budget. We're going to have to see about that. We have two pretty significant debt exclusions on the ballot this fall. No, we'll get to those. At some point, you know, the residents say, you know, my taxes, um, you can't continue to increase them. So we have to have, I think our budget process has worked fine to some extent. But I think we need to create more discipline around the process. <clears throat> we need to focus more from a revenue perspective. And we need to look at those recommendations uh, which are significant. Um, we're going to start tonight on the financial part of it, operations, budget process, the financial team. And then in time, we are going to get into some of the reorganization issues they talk about, which are highly controversial. Yeah, let's talk about some of those. Yeah. So the budget, you know, that's, that's okay. The, the, the budget process and how to streamline the budget process and make it more transparent and more understandable. I get all that part. But then I read the rest of it, and you can find this. People can find this on the town website, the Collins right. Center Report. If you Google, if you go on the town website and plug in search Collins That's Report, right. it'll pop up. It's 42, 45 pages, uh, and uh, <clears throat> has an executive summary, which is a couple of pages, but it does make some things. Some of the things, quite frankly, were rather shocking, and I'm of the basic philosophy of it ain't broke, don't fix it. Town's operated since 1859, uh, pretty successfully. Triple A tax rating, uh, high property values, people clamoring to get into town. It ain't broke if uh, we're looking at that. High tax rate, despite all the stuff you're talking about, people are climbing over each other's back to get into town. That That's says, right. That says a lot just for that. Right. So, you know, I look at some of this stuff here like, Okay, we're not going to appoint the assessors. We're going to appoint the treasurer, which I think we've already talked about at town meeting and it got voted down. Yeah, I forget which year it was, but it was, uh, but, it was a referendum, Steve. And to recall. make a stronger yeah. town administrator and to appoint all kinds of people, it's sort of a centralization of power, if you will. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. So 
as I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's cumbersome. Town meeting's cumbersome. You can be just like Watertown. You can become a city, just have a mayor, and just, uh, you know, dictate. That's okay, but if that's what people want. But yeah. I don't know. You know, that's a great point. I mean, it has worked, um, I think, through the efforts of current town administrator, prior town administrators, members of the select board. Um, you know, we had, we've had had... I think a reasonably uh, good working relationship with the school department and the school committee. I mean, we keep the lines of communication open, and that's so important. Um, even Steve Cirillo said at the meeting, if you watched, he says, we are one of the most, if not the most, decentralized towns in the Commonwealth. Now, you can say it's worked no matter what, and that's okay. Um, I don't think we should just ignore the recommendations. I'm not saying I, that there's no I'm not saying, improvement. But. I'm not saying that... I'm committed to, to those reorganization changes. I think we need to at least look at them. Now that's they talked fair. about that's, a that's they talked enough. about a study committee, and we can get additional input on this. Um, we've been very fortunate um, that we've had the town treasurer that we have, Floyd Carmen. He's done phenomenal work. He was the chief accounting officer at John Hancock. He had to learn town, being the town treasurer, and I'm not certain whether he's going to run again in the spring. And so my concern is that who will replace him if he decides not to run? It's a very important job. I think he has a lot to do with our AAA bond rating. We are strong financially, but the way he manages um, our debt and the way he manages that department has been very effective and helped us with AAA bond rating. I'm not knee-jerking this at all, Steve. That's just not my approach. No, I, I think we need I input from yourself and others in the community. Do you want an appointed treasurer? I, I was there. I was on the Warren Committee when we... We asked the town. We did it real. We did it. We we asked no no. Remember the referendum? Eight, yeah. We asked the town and it was voted down. I forget. The, it wasn't. It was in our recent memory. It's in yeah, the, it's, it's two thousand. Like, yeah. Might have been two thousand. I don't know. Eleven or twelve or thirteen, right when Floyd was elected, he he was on the ballot that year, if you recall, and that referendum was on the ballot and was defeated, um, by not by a wide margin, but by a margin. And so that was a message being sent. The town has changed since then, of course. And I'm not going to ignore the recommendations because I think we need to look at them all. I'm not saying we're going to implement them all. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's right. fine. I mean, I'm looking at it. It's a total revamp. Uh, I like the, you know, with respect to the treasurer, I like the independence. I mean, I, I don't want the, a treasurer to be uh, beholden to the person that gives them the job, which would be the select board. Right. Uh, under That's this right. report. It would be appointed by so, the select board. I you know, think, I, I get exactly. that. But yeah. select board might not may like it, but I like the independence, me personally, but that's okay. Well, but, I think that's uh, the kind of feedback we need to hear. I mean, I don't, I don't know where my colleagues are. I haven't really talked with them about it. Um, we'll, we're not going to get into that tonight. We are going to discuss it because it's important. I mean, we have a report, um, strong recommendations. I don't think we should ignore it. I'm not saying we have to implement everything, but well, we're going I, to look I at it. I hear you, and the piece that's missing out of this, because I've read it, Yep. And is, okay, if we did all this, how much money do you save? It's an, it's, it's, it, to me, it's the question. If we do this, are we going to save money? If we do this, how much money are we going to save? Yeah, I don't think it's... It's, it's not yeah, here. I'm not, I don't it's think not it's not even hinted here. I'm not sure. Just do all this stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a savings of money, Steve. I think it's more well. about... It's, it's a process issue, and we have to examine and, and, and self-reflection... Has the process work? Can you continue to work the way it is? All right. And and if it can, then that's fine. But we're gonna we're gonna dive into it. And I don't think we can knee jerk this. I don't think we could just do this in my mind um, in an expedited way. I think we need to get input from the community. All right. So yes. All right. Yes, Moving sir. on. We have yeah. Collins tonight. It says 9.05 on the agenda. Time will tell. It yeah. says 9.05 on the revised agenda. Oh, is it 9.05 that's now? That's what it says. Yeah, I'll give you the revised well, agenda, but yeah. that's okay. We have to... Uh, I think it's the last item I, of business I, there. I am challenged. You and I have talked about this. I think our agendas are too full. We have so much business to conduct. Maybe we need more meetings. Well, when uh, I was a chair, to... when, I, when, I, when I wasn't the chair, when I was on a board of selectmen, uh, we met weekly, which was a pain, yeah. but weekly because we had so much stuff. Yeah. But we'd start at 7 o'clock, you'd get your stuff done, and it was weekly, and you moved the business up. I, I always feel, I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm happy to meet more often. Um, I always feel bad when we're running 30 minutes, 45 minutes late, and someone's been waiting to, to be called. So we, 
as the, as the chair this year, um, clearly I need to do a better job of managing it. All right, no, no, this is not a criticism. It's Todd, it's like herding cats. Yeah. Don't worry about you it. You get into a topic, Steve, and what happens if, That's right. if a town resident calls in and we spend 15 minutes or we're ready 15 minutes? Well, you shouldn't let them in, quite frankly. That's it. Well, we're there because, to serve, no, right? No, no, I get that part. But maybe you should have just a town resident fest, fest. Say, okay, this meeting is call in by town residents. Handle it that way. It's, it's, a, it's a business meeting. I'm not saying cut out the residents, but it's a business meeting, not a public hearing. That's all I'll say because we yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. I've sort of floated that a little bit quarterly. We, would we have sort of an open mic night? Just or have just an open mic open night. Mic People forum. would like that. You yeah. might like it. You might like yeah. it. They always like talk it. about access but and, and it's, transparency. It's not a public hearing. Something it's a business think, meeting. Something to think about. I mean, do you have and would would folks attend? I mean, it's important to hear from a broader if it's a public hearing. You have an agenda. Do you need a topic or do you say, okay, hey, we have open mic tonight. Do you want to come and talk with us about yeah, just what, open what issues night. you want to talk about? We're having an open mic night. Come two hours, an hour and a half. It's an interesting idea. Come I mean, talk I, to the selectmen. I floated that with Here's the, the mic. I floated that with the town administrator, and people say, well, we have public forums on certain topics. You're the chair. Topics. You can just do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, some of we could spend 10 minutes on Well, that's issue. the nature yeah. of the beast. <laughs> Tell everybody you got five minutes. Yeah. All right. A couple of things. Yes, sir. So we have two overrides. You mentioned you hinted at them Dead earlier. Exclusions. So, so right. give, me, give me a uh, two minutes on the status of the library, and then we'll give a couple minutes yeah, on the so status of the, of the rink. What's going I, on with the I, library? I, the library is um, the debt exclusion on the ballot. It's a $39 million build. I think you know that, right? And uh, they've raised so far, last count, you know, in excess of $5 million, and they're out there fundraising. Uh, they're still active in the fundraising. I'm actually helping and supporting that effort. Uh, now that the, uh, the summer months have waned, it, I think that the month of September is an important month to, to try to move forward with additional uh, fundraising efforts, as you as you might know and understand, Belmont Savings Bank Foundation um, um, uh, made a commitment and called the donor intent of two million dollars to the library and one million to the rink, which I think is terrific. That the intent of that would be that if the debt exclusion passes, then they'll they'll provide the money. So if five, that's helpful. I mean, it'd be great to get higher than that. I know that Kathy Crane and the library trustees, the foundation, and and some of us as well that have been asked to support that effort are out there fundraising. Uh, you know, I think there's a real need in the community. I know there's different points of view that uh, do we really need this kind of a build. Um, I think we do. Um, I think it's really important for um, fundraising to continue to show that it's a public-private. I think fundraising is the private part of it. So if you can get to five, six, seven, perhaps ten, I don't know if we can get there. They have a lot of naming rights opportunities. That'd be great. And uh, that will help sort of defray right. some well, of the costs. We'll, we'll know as we get closer um, And I did to want to say one thing day. about uh, one-time funds. If I could mention, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, Steve. Chat with, with the chair. The that's rink. you. So the rink uh, <laughs> right now, I think, um, with the $1 million from Belmont Savings Bank, um, they're in excess of $2 million. They're out there actively soliciting contributions. I mean, some of the, we, you and I know some of the folks involved in that, uh, Bel Belmont Youth Hockey Association and others. Um, I understand that the, um, the, the uh, rink building committee meets weekly at 7.30 a.m. Meetings, I couldn't get, make those meetings, of course, but they're very active. Uh, it's really a great team that's there. And um, I think they're going to raise a pretty substantial amount of money. They have naming rights opportunities as well. So those of you out there have an interest, reach out to BYHA and uh, find out more about that. Uh, the other thing that we're going to consider, I'm not saying we're going to do this, is we're waiting for the certification of free cash. And once that takes place, my understanding is that it's going to be pretty substantial. And um, we have some rollover from last year of money that we didn't use. I think the board's going to de deliberate on perhaps we might use some of those funds for these projects. Or at least it has to be appropriated to town meeting. Steve, you know this, right? Mm -hmm. And town meeting will likely be after the debt exclusion vote. So if those two building uh, debt exclusions passed, we might think about using some of those one-time funds for major capital business. That's why they're there, right? That's what I've said. I haven't talked to my colleagues about it. I haven't gotten their point of view. Um, I'd like to see us put some money in reserves. If it's as robust as I'm hearing it will be. Uh, and perhaps allocating some amount, seven-figure amount, to both the rink and the library. I think that would be a good thing to do. So we'll see. We're going to debate that prior to the debt exclusion vote. Um, we have to wait for the certification. So I think with private fundraising, 
and perhaps some t use of one-time funds. Maybe we can sort of lessen the burden of the taxpayers in town. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm excited. November. I think we need so both projects. We come, we're coming on, it's August 29th, so it's September, October, November. Yeah. Uh, two months, maybe nine weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll know in close. nine weeks, I guess, right? Well, no. I think it's two projects <clears throat> that are needed, and we'll see what the folks, the residents of our, taxpayers of our community believe, believe uh, whether we do or not. We'll see. I think people want to know how much it's going to add to their bill. I think that needs to get done. Yeah, and that's one of the, you and know, and that's a great out, point, well, Steve. How much this is going to cost me? That's a great point. We need to get back to that, and and I've asked about that. We we need to, um, and it's not just average homeowner. We need to do it in in tranches, like below and above, and that has to get out there. That hasn't gotten out there yet. You know, a lot of folks. We've been busy all summer, but you and I were on vacation last week. A lot of folks are vacation in summer months. Now that we're into the fall, we need to clearly articulate on the debt exclusion vote for the rink and for the library, what the average tax bill will be for the average homeowner and then some. Make sense? It makes sense. People to want me. to know how much more they're going to have to spend. Well, I, you don't buy stuff. Or commit to, to it, I should say. Is. Right, exactly. It's a difficult time. You know, I know inflation, hopefully it's abating somewhat, but you know, again, we're in, a, we're in a difficult period right now, um, still recovering from COVID to ask for tax increases. I think the buildings are needed. Um, I hope I've communicated to both groups that Fundraise, fundraise, fundraise. It's so important. Well, there you go. Well, you know, maybe bury some of that uh, one-time funds in a in a stabilization fund for Agreed. maintenance of the buildings. Agreed. I completely maintenance support that. Maintenance of the that. buildings. I completely support that. Budgeted maintenance yeah. of the buildings. Yeah. Agreed. But uh, I think anyway. We'll, I think we'll find our way there. I, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm only one vote on the board, but we'll find our way there. Well, it is interesting because, yeah. you know, our, uh, where your brother lives is Watertown. I mean, they're not going to have any problem with taxes. Real Steve, estate they're taxes. flush with cash. No kidding. They're rolling in the cash because they're building, building. Because they have room. Yeah. Cambridge, no worries. They got Lexington, Arsenal no Mall. worries. They so when, they, when the cause report re uh, uh, compares us to all these people, Burlington, Lexington, yeah, right. uh, Newton, we don't, it's, it's, we're three and a half or four miles. You have South Pleasant Street, a couple of squares. That's no open space uh, for commercial development. Four percent. Really. Four to five percent. Unless commercial. you, you know, just say, okay, yeah. free reign on South Pleasant Street, go up five, six stories and, and, and yeah. build some lab space. Well, I'm I mean, supportive you know, of development there. I know there's been some projects that have been proposed and, um, but again, Steve, you know, we're landlocked before. Well, that's the problem. That's why the tax rate's so difficult. And we're four to five percent commercial base. It's not going to go up that dramatically. All right. Expansion of the tax base. Yes. Uh, they mentioned it here. We need to diversify the tax base. Yeah. We have eight empty stores in. Seven. In, in the center. <laughs> is it eight? No, it's seven. My, yeah. no, no. Well, Kamel's <laughs> going to leave and whatever it is, yeah. but uh, yeah. the I, I have my office in Cushing Square and they still haven't rented all of that. Yeah. Bottom line is there's tons of open spaces. Yeah. So to me, the town needs to have an effort. I'd love to have the town have an effort to go recruit businesses, not just banks and stuff, businesses that the others want. I talked to Jerry Dickout, and I said, what do you want here in town? What would you like here in the middle of town? He said, Steve, we're sad to lose Camellas because they brought in foot traffic, but we want a phone store, just a wireless phone store. He says, because the people, the foot traffic that's people bring in and out is unbelievable. Yeah. We need to have something that people will go do. I'm not saying that's the be on, but the types of businesses that will drive people to a location to park, get out, do some stuff. It, it's that helps. That would help. The rents are probably too high, but deal with the landlords for that. But uh, in any event, that's my spiel. But but maybe rather than economic development, how about a recruiter? Go find some businesses that would be a nice fit. In well, time. it's interesting that you mentioned that. I have um, before I went on vacation, mm -hmm. um, I did meet with the Belmont Center Business Association and Jerry Dick out and asked him those same questions. He did mention the phone store, but I said, Jerry, what can we do as a board to support the seven empty storefronts? He said, it's going to be down to five. I think they rented one of the spaces. I can't recall which one. I said, we need to do more as a select board. Do we need to provide free parking in the back? Um, we need, he said, we need clarity on the parking in, on Leonard Street um, in terms of using, you know, getting your ticket. And so I did meet with the Belmont Center and Business. That's good. So I opened up that line of communication. And what came of that is the need, and I push for this, to meet with all of the landlords in Belmont Center. So I actually have a meeting this week with one of the landlords. And just to ask them, CVS has been 
you know, I, we have names of all of the landlords. So I'm committed, Steve, and the board is committed to meeting with these landlords and asking them what more can we do to support the business community, local business community. Belmont Center, Cushing Square, Waverly Square. We yep. need to open up that line of communication, which frankly hasn't been as open as it needed to be. So I appreciate you saying that. Well, I think we good. need to do more. I look at it as a quality of life issue, Steve. Um, it's a quality of life issue for our residents. When you have seven empty storefronts, it impacts quality of life, in my mind. Looks because bad. it looks bad. Not only does it look bad and perhaps impacts our tax revenues, it also is a quality of life. Those stores aren't there. People want to come to Belmont Center on the weekends or during the week and shop. And so it's a quality of life. So I'm committed to trying to All right. turn that around. All right. Excellent. Um, well, we, thank we, you. Just briefly on that, I know we, we're close on time here. We need to get back to, clearly we have the Economic Development Advisory Committee. I think they've done good work. We've been meeting with them more often. But we need to get back to the whole pilot payment issue. It's a controversial topic. We've tried to do it in the past. We've given it more than lip service, but we need to get back to it in a bigger way to see if we can reach out to our not-for-profits in town to provide some level of financial support. We'll see about that. But that's in the Collins Center report as well, as you know. Yep, I see yep. that. All right, so we got uh, two minutes left. So it's been a, th a thorn in my side, as many people, if you go on social media, since we don't have a time. I avoid paper. social media. That, yeah. that's, the, that's probably wise. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go on social media. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I got to figure out how to get on there, but secondly, I don't want to go. It's, 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 the striping it's, on Concord <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> What's how did I know that was coming up? How did Avenue? I know Stop that was coming it with up. the striping on Concord <laughs> Avenue. You know, let's let's talk in the middle of the street. Uh, people come. Yeah. No, uh, seriously, uh, yeah. I don't know what the problem is. You know, safety of bikers, okay, but safety of bikers versus the safety of pedestrians versus the safety of motorists. You, it, you're putting ten pounds in an eight-pound bag. Yeah. So what's up with that, and uh, can it go away? Well, I don't know whether it can go away. I, I don't know whether it's been completed, and I have talked to uh, Glenn Clancy about that and asked him about the feedback, and he said he's not gotten any negative comments. I said, okay, well, that's okay, interesting. Well, I'll um, send you I've later. gotten, yeah, yeah, don't send me Facebook posts, but um, I have seen some emails, and I haven't checked my, my, in, my government inbox. I've been away all week, but, uh, yeah, I think we need to look at that, Steve. I mean, certainly there have been some concerns expressed about safety. I mean, when I voted for it, it was a 2-1 vote, if you recall. I think Roy abstained or voted against it. Um, you know, I was looking at that based on a recommendation from the Transportation Advisory Committee that it would enhance the safety of cyclists. I, I thought Concord Ave before that was unsafe for cyclists. Um, yeah, I mean, I, look, it can be undone if it doesn't work, right, from my point of view. I know mm -hmm. we striped it, which is unfortunate if it's, it has to be undone. But I think we need to listen to the feedback. I mean, we put this in place. We can't ignore if it isn't working and if the conditions, I don't, I'm not saying this is the case. Emails I've gotten to suggest that it's the case. I don't know that. Uh, that if, if it has become less safe, then we need to address it. We've been chatting with the chair, Mark Palillo. Thank you. For Welcome. My his, pleasure, Steve. This is Belmont always. Journal. Yeah. Our wonderful producer, Joanna Zuvlis, our Cracker Jack staff here at Belmont Media Center. I'm Steve Rosales, your host. Until next time, take care.